It's a real pleasure uh, for us to jointly present the next award um, to a real champion for mental health and suicide prevention. And I would like to ask somebody to come up and join us. Ani, would you come on up and join us up here? Those of you that don't know, uh, Ani Ramiro uh, worked uh, for um, Representative Napolitano for many years. So, um, and now she's on our policy count. She's still, she's an advocate. So we'd like her to come up and, and join okay. us too. Oh, thank you. Present the award. I got to co-staff today, which I haven't done in a while, so I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, we'll go back and forth? Sounds okay. Good. So 20 years, for 20 years, 10 terms uh, in the House, um, Representative Napolitano has been a voice for people with mental illness and to prevent suicide. So it's really an honor for us to recognize what you've done. Paul? Yeah, I want to echo those, those comments. Uh, as we have seen, there are so many advocates that we have, but uh, when you go back over time and over decades, uh, one consistent advocate who has always been there and around whom mental health policy at the national level always seems to circulate is Representative Grace Napolitano. So uh, again, I echo Bob's comment. It is an honor to have you here tonight to be able to recognize you in this way. A founding member of the Mental Health Caucus, um, as well as a voice for young people and their mental health needs, veterans and their mental health needs, and really all Americans and our mental health needs. All, so, Paul? With half of mental illnesses beginning by the age of 14, three quarters by the age of 24, we have needed people who have been champions of children. Uh, for too long, we've ignored the fact that many of the people that we need to be dealing with and many of the people we need to be thinking about are our kids. And the reality is that Representative Malatano was one of the first people to recognize and understand the importance of focusing in on our children if we're actually to focus in on prevention. And so it's critically important that she has changed the way people have thought about mental illnesses and about the onset of mental illnesses in America. Now we know that you have introduced several times um, legislation to, uh, <laughs> to focus on mental health in schools. And our pledge to you is we will continue to fight for that in your name and on behalf of all of our young people who need help. So thank you. Would you come up and receive your award? I have an audience that I'd like to talk to. Uh, uh, thank you, Anne. Thank you uh, very much for this award. It really is truly remarkable. Uh, the time that we spent trying to get people to recognize the issues of mental health. And Anne, uh, I met the young lady in Los Angeles. I was doing a forum and, uh, on mental health. And she, I was in the State Assembly. And she came and I said, I want her. And I hired her. And she became a mental health uh, a person in Washington, but now she's doing other things. Very good, fighting for the, the good fight. Uh, I am proud, of, well, you talk about uh, the fight for children. Uh, in 2001, I got a half a million dollar grant from SAMHSA to start a program on in schools. And uh, it, it was a beginning in one high school and three middle schools to put on-site clinicians to deal with cutters, bipolar, schizophrenia, et cetera. W um, bullying hadn't entered the picture yet. But uh, we found soon uh, there was great reticence from the schools to accept a program like that in the school. We don't want to be known as crazy schools. Now there's a waiting list in Los Angeles which the county has picked up 
We're now in 26 schools and growing. And so far, knock on wood, there have been no attempted suicide. It was labeled Latina Adolescent Suicide Prevention, but it was meant for any child, regardless uh, of any gender, no questions asked, no money, free service. And that has grown because they've seen the need and shown that it is something that is necessary in our schools to help children cope and deal with the, the pressures that they're uh, facing. But um, I am very proud because I have great staff. Daniel Chow, my chief of staff, he, he, uh, But uh, the young man that leads it uh, in my office is Jonah. Where are you, Jonah? <laughs> Jonah, all of you get to know him. He's the one to call. Uh, uh, I co-chair the Mental Health Caucus. When I saw that there was a, a caucus that had been defunct when I first came in, I thought uh, it's time to pay attention to it. And we started holding meetings, and if we got five people in the room, that was a lot. Now you're beginning to see the attention paid to the necessity of addressing the issue, but no funding. So we have to urge Congress. Uh, Mr. Kako, my colleague, my co-chair, makes uh, a comparison of Zika. They put a billion, they lost one life, and yet they don't put hardly any into mental health. We have to change that uh, dynamic, uh, simply because we're losing too many lives. And we certainly know that from your standpoint. Uh, and I, I came to this sort of by accident. Uh, when I was in the State Assembly, there's a, a mental health hospital close to my home in Norwalk. And we started delving into and finding out that they were uh, people letting out with no uh, safety net. And when the, the federal government decided to close hospitals, there was no safety net for the people being uh, put out in the community. They expected the community to take care of them. So it was something that was near and dear to my heart because it came from where I came from, is uh, addressing an issue that nobody wants to talk about. It is a stigma, and we have to work together to reduce the stigma. It is certain that that is part of it. But in what we find out, uh, and I have to tell you a little story, I went to Colorado for a water meeting one about eight years ago, and the driver assigned to me was a gentleman with a family. He was very courteous, wonderful man, and when he got home after dropping me off at the airport, he went home to find his daughter hanging in a closet. It hurts. You all know suicide is, happens to anybody, everybody. And now that uh, the media is now beginning to pay a little attention to it, we've got to capitalize on that. You've got to get them to understand. It goes beyond the wealthy and the well-known. Well, the stigma is still quite an issue. We have to learn to combat it. We have to learn that we cannot give up. We must continue to fight, and we must always be aware of our role and do what we can and continue working for things to happen. And so I would urge anybody to please talk to you, state, to your federal, to your city, uh, uh, thanks, honey. <laughs> uh, communicate to anybody in elected office. They have to know that it affects people in the community. And if they are not aware of it, they should be aware of it. They should be made aware of it because it is affecting not only the community, but their business. And that's where it hurts them. Uh, little, uh, uh, well, I talked to you about Zika, but uh, there are many other things I would talk to you about, but you'll have to excuse me. I just get a little emotional. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.